Hi, I'm Dr. Timothy Shen. Once again, welcome to Heart to Heart, a video series created to provide important heart and vascular information to you throughout the month of February. Today's feature is an interview with Dr. Vincent Seminetti, medical director of our open heart surgical program. Dr. Simonetti is a cardiothoracic surgeon, which means that he performs complex surgeries on the heart, heart valves, the aorta, blood vessels, and other large arteries connected to the heart. On February 24th, during our question and answer session, we will answer any questions we've received during our Heart to Heart video series. So please leave your questions in the comments section. Thank you, Dr. Shin, for that great uh, introduction. Um, hi, I am Teresa Dark from Marketing and Communications. And as Dr. Shin said, uh, I have today with me Dr. Vincent Simonetti. Welcome. Thank you. Will you please tell our viewers a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I'm the cardiac surgeon here at uh, Henry Ford Allegiance Health. Uh, I was one of the surgeons recruited to start the program here about 14 years ago. Prior to that, I had been in practice for about nine years uh, on the East Coast. But I uh, grew up and was trained in the Detroit area, so I was looking for an opportunity to come back home. And at the time, it was Foot Hospital here, um, was just starting a brand new open heart surgery program. And it was the uh, next phase of my career to, to kind of own a program and start it from the ground up. And uh, here we are 14 years later and about uh, almost 2,500 patients later. Uh, we're really doing quite a service for the community here. Thank you, that's awesome. So t today is Valentine's Day and traditionally Henry Ford Ute Allegiance Health holds our annual heart reunion. And that reunion brings together our open heart surgery patients and our TAVR patients together with their care team. And because of our safety protocols for COVID-19, we are not able to do that. So would you be willing to say a few words to our viewers out there who are our open heart surgery patients and our TAVR patients? Certainly. Um, as I said, uh, 14 years ago, uh, Jackson Community and uh, Legion's Health did not have an open heart surgery program and it's a small community. So once we started the program, it was a small um, population of patients that were alumni of our procedure. So we started early on to bring those alumni together to discuss their stories and, and show our appreciation. And certainly over the course of 14 years and 2,500 patients later, that reunion has grown to uh, quite a substantial level. And uh, it's enjoyed by all of our staff and our patients. And it's very disappointing that this um, uh, protocols have come in, in the way of that the last year and again this year. So certainly uh, we hope to be uh, together again by next year. And in the interim, uh, I certainly, as always, wish all our alumni of our procedures uh, well. And um, we really miss having a nice annual uh, get together and um, hopefully we'll do it again soon. Yes, it'll be nice to have it and hopefully in 2023 we can do that. So um, a few questions for you. Um, can you tell us the difference between open heart surgery and other heart procedures? Sure, well, uh, open heart uh, surgery today is mostly a misnomer, meaning that we don't really open the heart these days, um, but it, uh, it's commonly used as a term for when we go through the breastbone. We use the heart-lung machine to stop the heart from beating so that we can work on it. The majority of the operations we do are coronary artery bypass grafting which is rerouting the blood around blockages in the arteries of the heart using veins or arteries from elsewhere in the heart. And that's on the surface of the heart. Open heart surgery uh, also um, uh, includes um, the valve surgery, which is on the inside of the heart where we have to open up the heart, either cut out a valve or repair a valve. 
and that too requires um, cardiopulmonary bypass. Certainly there are recent advances uh, where uh, we don't have to use the heart-lung machine to stop the heart from beating and we can actually do some of these uh, repairs or replacements while the heart is still beating. It's, it's amazing what technology has done and afforded us. And, um, it's really interesting to hear about this when you're talking about the on pump and off pump and how that makes a difference with people. So can you explain a little bit about what that means? Yeah. So the pump is a cardiopulmonary bypass machine and that replaces the function of both the heart and the lungs while we're working on it. So the machine takes blood from the body, adds oxygen to it, and then pumps it back to the body to sustain all the major organs while we're working on the, on the heart without it beating. Um, in order to do uh, heart surgery while the heart's beating without using the heart-lung machine or the pump, we either have to be working on the surface of the heart, uh, which can be done for uh, bypass surgery with special instruments uh, in rare circumstances, or for valves, the, the most common latest uh, excitement in the field is the, uh, is the valve replacement on a beating heart actually through the groin. It's called TAVR, T-A-V-R, and that stands for transarterial um, aortic valve replacement. And that's uh, much like stents in the arteries, but it's a, a valve in the aortic um, position of the heart. So um, when your team has to decide which is the proper procedure to go through, so what are the protocols or what are the signs that you can determine which surgery they need to have or procedure? Well, it's everything in medicine is based on risk and benefit, uh, basically. And obviously, an open heart surgery uh, procedure is very invasive and has added risk. So in order for that to uh, be a benefit to the patient, uh, um, it's usually uh, a much more involved, detailed procedure that warrants that risk. Uh, some patients that have extra cor comorbidities or age or frailty um, won't tolerate that invasive procedure. And then um, while the benefits may not be as, as great in the long run, minimally invasive procedures are clearly the better choice. So. We know there's other um, signs and symptoms that lead up to uh, open heart surgery. So what can you tell our viewers they would, um, should see their primary doctor for, for possible signs that are affecting their heart and they may have some issues? Certainly the um, most common uh, uh, reason for open heart surgery, as I said, is bypass of the coronary arteries. And that's uh, the typical symptoms of chest pain or angina. Uh, usually with exertion, but sometimes at rest. There's certainly atypical um, presentations of angina, which include shortness of breath and lightheadedness and dizziness or jaw or arm pain. Um, and that's certainly an indication to get uh, your heart checked out with EKGs, uh, with your primary doctor and possibly a cardiologist, echocardiogram, and ultimately a catheterization, which uh, injects dyes into those arteries to see the blockages which may need to be addressed. Uh, other reasons for surgery, as I said, are the heart valves, and that usually presents not so much as chest pain, but as heart failure symptoms, which can be uh, shortness of breath or breathlessness, um, or swelling, and um, other common signs of, of heart failure where the heart is unable to pump uh, the appropriate amount of blood and oxygen to the rest of the body's organs. So there's a lot of pieces that go into it before we just, you know, decide on a surgery. And I really like hearing that. And so you've been here 14 years leading this program and doing all these really great things. And your care team, um, I know from experience from friends, that you create a personalized experience. Can you tell us a little bit how you take care of your patients when they come through? Um, certainly, we do have a, a lot of pride in our care team. Uh, the surgeon is only one piece of that, and um, we've always uh, had a, a wonderful team here in Jackson. It's a small community, and, and all our, our uh, 
staff are greatly appreciative and um, very um, dedicated. Uh, we were one of the first in the state, if not the country, when we started this open heart surgery program here that developed a, um, a um, single unit stay for open heart surgery so that it's the same care members uh, from the time that you come in the hospital until the time that you leave. We no longer have um, what's uh, historically considered um, ICUs and step downs and floors. The, the room stays the same. It's the care around the patient in the same room that changes throughout the course of the stay. So it's the same staff members taking care of patients for four or five days while they're in the hospital. Uh, it's the same respiratory therapists, same physical therapists, and uh, that creates quite a bond between our staff and the patients. And of course, um, the team is extended beyond that unit into uh, our office where we have uh, receptionists, uh, nurses, um, MAs, and um, PAs uh, helping us prepare patients for surgery before and, and uh, taking care of the patients afterwards as well as a wonderful operating room staff which uh, we couldn't do the procedure obviously um, without great staff in the operating room. Yeah, that sounds really amazing because I know that, you know, having that consistent group of people taking care of it makes the patient feel so comfortable and, you know, uh, they enjoy their care more if they have to be here because they know somebody, the same face is going to be taking care of them and know their history. So that's really amazing. And that's quite, uh, quite a part of the draw of the reunion every year is because those patients get such a bond with our staff. and. And, uh, and then through the reunion with each other. Yes, and I've, I've attended that, and those are really amazing, the stories that they tell and how thankful they are for their care and, and vice versa. I, I see, you know, the nurses you know, and PAs and all, everybody giving hugs and checking in on their people that they have, you know, and successfully navigating back out there. And so it's really a beautiful um, event, and we're hoping for 2023 to have that. Um, thank you for coming and talking with us. We really appreciate it, Dr. Simonetti. Oh, you're welcome. My pleasure, as always. One more thing. Um, we are having our Q&A on February 24th. So if you have questions and comments for Dr. Simonetti, please put them in the comment section on Facebook when this posts. Thank you.